Hi everyone, and welcome to another video of the SAFI webinar series. In this video, we are going to have an overview of basic loads and load combinations. Basic loads are groups of loads of the same type. When a load is assigned to a structural element, it must be related to a basic load of a compatible group. For example, a uniform static load must be attached to a static basic load. The load combinations are defined using the basic loads. The basic loads and the applied loads must be defined according to the anticipated load combinations. The basic loads are defined in a table accessible from the menu Tables and the Basic Loads command. The structural analysis in the program is based on the combination of basic loads. The analysis will not run if the load combinations are not defined by the user, except for the frequency or pretension analysis. To define the load combinations, the user needs to specify the basic load factors. The combination type describing the use of the load combination needs to be selected. The ultimate limit state type is used for the resistance. Service limit state is used to verify deflection, vibration, and stresses. The fatigue type is the result for stress verification related to fatigue analysis. Cracked SLS, this is available only for the concrete module and it's reserved for crack deflection analysis for concrete slabs and beams. It is possible to disable a load combination without deleting it by setting the load combination type to disabled. It is possible to generate load combinations automatically using the load combination generation wizard. In this case, the user needs to specify a building code and based on that building code and the basic loads defined in the model, the wizard will create load combinations based on the specific code. The wizard also allows to create load patterns. Let's start our demo. To create a basic load, we click on the menu, Tables, and we select the command Basic Loads. This command is also available on the Addition toolbar. If we click on the arrow button here, we can find the Basic Load command. To create a basic load, we simply enter a name of the basic load. On the second column, we specify the load type. The available load types are general static load, dead load, additional dead load, live load, wind load, ice load, snow load, static seismic load, earth pressure load, crane load, thermal load, roof live load, reducible live load, Reducible Live Load NBC Assembly, Response Spectrum Seismic Load, Time History Seismic Load, and Dynamic Load. So, we select the type. For example, in this case, a general static load. We click OK to validate. We need to assign a basic load to any load applied on any element of the structure. For example, if we want to add a load on this member, so let's say we want to add a member load, the first thing to do is to assign the basic load to this load. So, in this case, let's assign the basic load that we just assigned. For example, a uniform force in the x direction, and we will use 2 kN. Finally, we click Add. Now we can see the load. To delete a basic load, we need to click on the load type of the basic load, then we select the option delete the load. It's important to keep in mind when we delete the basic load, all the loads that are attached to this basic load will be deleted as well. Here for example, when I click OK, you can see the load assigned to these members are deleted as well. To run an analysis, the user needs to specify basic loads, but more importantly, the user needs to specify load combinations. Any structural analysis requires load combinations. To define load combinations, we click on the Tables menu and the Load Combination command. This command is also available on the Addition toolbar from this menu. In the Load Combination dialog box, the user can create load combinations manually by clicking on the button Add a new tab. In each tab, the user will find a list of all basic loads available in the model. We have the dead basic load, live, snow, and wind x. We can specify a name to this load combination. For example, 
Let's call it dead plus 1.5 wind. Next, we need to assign the load factors for its basic load. For example, for the dead basic load, we apply a factor of 1, and for the wind, we apply a factor of 1.5. Load combinations are a combination of unfactored basic loads with load factors. So, a basic load with the load factor equal to 0 will be ignored for a given load combination. It is not part of the specific load combination. So, by default, when we create a load combination, this checkbox is checked which means the load combination is enabled. So when we run the analysis, the load combination will be included in the analysis. If we uncheck this box, the load combination will be disabled and it will not be included in the analysis. The type of load combination describing the usage of the load combination must be selected. The possible values are ultimate limit state, or ULS, and service limit state, SLS. The fatigue option is reserved for stress verification related to fatigue only, and cracked SLS is for the concrete module and fire resistance is for the wood module. The next option is the notional lateral load. Real structures contain defect zones of partial yielding, and residual stresses are not taken into account in numerical models. Several design standards require a fictitious minimum horizontal load, also called notional loads, that create a horizontal deformation of the structure, which causes an amplification of the forces and deformation. This load is not a minimum load, it is added to the existing horizontal load. For example, any wind seismic load in the model. When the option Enable Auto is selected, the notional load is applied in the same direction as the existing horizontal load. The user can specify a specific direction for the notional lateral load to be applied from this list. It is also possible to disable the notional load completely by selecting this option. The load duration factor, KD, applies only for wood elements. It represents a multiplication factor applied to the specified strength to account for the duration of the load. This factor is between 0.65 for long-term loads and 1.15 for short-term loads. To delete a load combination, the user can use the button Remove Current tab. It is also possible to display and edit the load combination in a numerical table by clicking on this button. Let's delete all the load combinations. In many cases, it's possible to create the load combination using the load combination wizard. First, the user needs to select a building code from this list. Next, we check all the parameters that apply in this dialog box. After that, we click on the button Next. The user can specify load patterns if applicable in their model. We can add a new row and we specify the load patterns by checking this box. After that, we click Finish to finish the operation. Now we can see all the load combinations are generated automatically according to the US code. Thank you for watching and catch you in another one of our webinar series videos.